pretty much impossible to be a K-pop stan and had never come across the name Super Junior. Depending on your age or time being a fan of the genre, maybe you don't know it, but Super Junior is one of the biggest reasons why your favorite idols are idols today. During their peak, the group was dubbed by the media as the kings of the Hallyu wave. But among all the 15 members that already were a part of Super Junior, there's one in particular that seems to be forgotten by the K-pop community. Because despite him being a true trailblazer in the Korean entertainment industry, he's barely even mentioned. This member's Han Gum, also known by his Korean stage name Han Gyeong. At the age of 12, Han Gam left his family and his hometown in Mudanjang, Heilongjiang, China, after being accepted into the dance department at the Central University for Nationalities in Beijing. He received training in ballet and martial arts, mastered all 56 types of traditional dances from China's 56 ethnic groups, and performed in different countries such as Russia and United States. His career as an idol started after being discovered in 2001 at SM Entertainment's HOT China Audition Casting. Han Gam was selected and started to train under the company in 2002, when he was still 18. The next year, he moved to South Korea without speaking the country's language, using a vacation visa that made him had to return to China every three months to renew it. In the same year, he signed a 13-year contract with the company in order to be able to make good money from fame, as he didn't come from a wealthy family. Although signing the contract would mean that he had to be stuck with SM until he was at his early 30s, Han Gam saw this opportunity as his only chance and signed the contract, going against his father's will, who even cried following Han Gam's decision, as he couldn't help but feel like he had sold his son to SM Entertainment so that their family could live a better life. Han Gam had an insanely intense training period, training for 22 hours a day, which obviously affected his health. He suffered nosebleeds and one time fracture a part of his body and couldn't even realize. In October of 2005, he was one of the first members to be announced as a part of SM Entertainment's upcoming boy group Super Junior and received lots of attention for being Chinese. Super Junior debuted in November of that same year with the single titled Twins Knockout that saw a good commercial performance. But it doesn't even compare to the massive success the group was about to face in the future. Following their first comeback with the title track You, Han Gam held the positions of lead dancer and vocalist within Super Junior, as well as the title of first ever Chinese idol to debut in K-pop. Although foreign idols debuting in K-pop may seem like not a big deal for newer fans, back then it wasn't a very common thing to see. So much that Han Gam spent a few years being the only Chinese in K-pop, and he faced a lot of discrimination for it. As he was a part of one of the top Asian acts of our time, Han Gam became pretty popular among the South Korean public over time, but if we rank all members, he would end up falling behind his Korean groupmates. Which I'm sure it's no surprise to anyone since, till this day, foreign idols still have a hard time competing in popularity with the Korean members of their groups, so you can imagine how things were two decades ago. SM obtained an E6 Entertainment Industry Passport, which allowed Han Gam to stay in South Korea for longer periods. But it wasn't enough as back then there was a law in South Korea that prevented foreigners who are staying in the country only with a passport from appearing on more than three television channels. Otherwise, they could get fined and even kicked out of the country, so he could not participate in certain portions of Super Junior's schedule, film commercials or act in dramas and movies that were not related to the group. SM didn't know about any of the laws before Super Junior started promoting, so Han Gam started to perform wearing a mask to cover his face and had his lines lip-synced by the other members during the early months of the group's career, which led to many believe that he was a backup dancer. This situation, of course, made Hangam extremely sad, and also really bothered the member Heechil in particular. Heechil is the member of Super Junior who's the closest to Hangam, and he was not happy at all with his friend having to hide. So one time while performing, Heechil ripped the mask off Hangam's face and pushed him to the front of the stage, Unfortunately, footage of this performance is a huge mystery among older K-pop fans. If the performance was recorded and posted on the internet is not confirmed, but many claim that it really was available online at some point and believe that SM was the one who whipped off its existence to avoid controversy. The performance became a very popular piece of lost media that fans are still trying to find till this day. We only know for sure that the incident happened because Hangam already shared the story himself. It's claimed that Hangan tried to hide after Heechil ripped off his mask but he performed unmasked for the rest of the performance and no longer had to hide his face after that. Although this performance will maybe never see the daylight, it holds an immense amount of power. 
since it's thanks to people like Hungam, who had to deal with so much discrimination that nowadays foreign idols don't go through the same stuff. Years later, the law that prohibited foreigners from appearing on more than three television channels was suspended, but he continued unable to pursue an acting career. Acting was a personal wish of Hangan, but it was blocked by his own company. He planned on becoming an actor as he didn't saw himself being an idol past 30 years old. However, unlike his fellow members who started to receive acting gigs right after debuting, Hangan was told by SM that he couldn't act while being a part of Super Junior. All of this obviously affected his popularity in South Korea. But in China, it was a completely different story. Right after his debut, Hangan quickly became one of China's most notorious stars and the blueprint for Chinese people succeeding in K-pop. Similar to how nowadays Lisa is seen as the Thai who reached the highest level in K-pop and Hani as the Vietnamese, Hangan was seen as the Chinese idol in K-pop. In April of 2008, he debuted as the leader of the subunit Super Junior M also known as Super Junior China, as the unit was focused on the country's market. Super Junior M is known as the first international group in the history of China, and according to Wikipedia, they became the most successful unit of Super Junior. The group was already nominated at the Golden Melody Awards, which is the Chinese equivalent of the American Grammys, and increased to 5.01% the ratings of the show, strictly come dancing after making an appearance in one of its episodes, thus making it the third most watched show in the history of China. Although he already revealed that he got tired over the fact that the Korean members of the unit couldn't speak Chinese, Super Junior M was very beneficial for Hangan's career. As he started appearing to the public more and more while sharing the spotlight with less members and at his own country. In August of that same year, he became the first boy group member in history to be chosen as a torchbearer for the Beijing Olympics, thanks to his various contributions to the spread of Chinese culture, and was a part of the song Beijing Welcomes You for the 100 day countdown to the event. In January of 2009, Hangan was able to make his official acting debut as the main character of the Chinese mini-drama called Stage of Youth, which was a tribute to the 2008 Beijing Olympics and had its opening song sang by him as well. Stage of Youth received wide acclaim and high ratings during its broadcast and contributed to Hangan's big rise in popularity. He was now at the top of his game, but in December, he drew to a close his activities with Super Junior after secretly filing with the Seoul District Court a lawsuit against SM to terminate his contract taking the company, the public, and even his groupmates by surprise. Hangan's legal team claimed that the exclusive contract with SM kept him bound to the company for an unlawful amount of time, that after debuting, he was not given a single rest day per week, which made him develop gastritis and kidney disease for being so overworked. Even during bad health, he was not allowed to skip any scheduled activities due to contract obligations and heavy penalties. They stated, because of Super Junior's recent continuous overseas activities, it has been nearly two years since Hangan last rested. All this time, he has been rushing to schedules. Due to contract obligations and heavy penalties, he did not skip any scheduled activities even if his health was poor. Because of these kinds of health problems, he has continuously sent requests to rest, but they have always been rejected. Other than when the group began promotions in 2006, he had to stay in Korea. Through the group's manager, Hangan requested permission from SM Entertainment for leaves to return to China to rest, but he was rejected every single time. It was added that the contract terms put SM Entertainment at an extremely favored position, as a large percentage of Hangan's earnings were going to the company. During the contract period, SM had all the copyright of albums and songs written, composed, and arranged by Hangan, so they could use them without his permission. If an album Hangan was featured in, sold 50,000 physic copies, he would receive 2% the profit. Regarding digital sales, he could get 10% if the income was equal with the net profit. The overseas income also had to be equal with the net profit before he could get 60% of the profit. SM deducted all the promotion activities, expenses, and fees of Super Junior's overseas activities, and the remaining money was divided among all the members of the group. The company had the right to request Hangan to be in any activity that they wanted. He had no control over his schedule at all since his period as a trainee. If he was late or absent from any schedule while training, he would be fined 10,000 won for the first time and 20,000 for the second. If this happened after his debut, he would have to pay for all the damage. Could be fined for 5 million won and have his contract canceled. If Hangan were to terminate the contract, he would be blocked from activities of Super Junior and was not allowed to revise it. If he wanted to move to another company and continue active, he would have to pay SM threefold of the money that the company had invested to him and pay twofold for the loss of the remain time of his contract. 
The lawsuit file obviously caused huge controversy and happened just three months after Hang An's label mates, Junsu, Jae Jung, and Yu Chan of TVXQ did the same thing. In my most recent video, I covered their whole case, and I recommend you to go watch it. The link will be in the description of the video. At the same time, Hang An received support and understanding from the public. He was also very attacked, mostly by fans of Super Junior, who felt like he was not being considerate of the other members of the group. In September of 2010, Super Junior was a guest on a show and talked about the situation. The leader, Lee Tuk, who learned about Hang An's departure after reading an article said, it would have been nice if he discussed his problems with the members first, because we honestly had no idea. None of us ever thought that Hang An would act like that. We leave an empty space for Hang An. My one dream is to stand on stage with all 13 of us and perform before I leave for the army. I hope for it to happen. The members also expressed that they were missing Hang An and felt disappointed when reports said that his life in Korea was difficult and that the super junior members didn't take care of him. Out of all members, Heechul seems to be the one who felt Hang An's departure the most. They used to share the same dorm, but after Hang An's withdrawal, he isolated himself from the world for months. <laughs> He revealed in an interview that during this period he faced depression and shared, I was in a big chaos. It was difficult for me to laugh on TV and dance on stage. I had some lingering emotions. Since I did not meet any people, depression got worse. I lived with Hangan, drank together and was really close. It was mentally difficult. Still in 2010, a statement that Hangan's childhood friend and manager, Sun Lee, submitted to the Korean courts, along with Hangan's other legal documents for the lawsuit, were leaked online by an anonymous source and was later on confirmed to be true by Sun Lee himself. In the statement, Sun Lee listed seven cases of SM's unfair treatment towards Hangan. He mentioned the mask fiasco, the company's irrational refusals when handling Hangan's solo career and interests, claimed that SM treated his friends and potential business collaborators poorly, that he was paid once every half a year, was only given information regarding the total amount earned without a detailed breakdown. He was only asked to sign off on the total balance and was never provided the original or copy of any financial document. Despite numerous and repeated requests to SM, the company always paid Hangan in Korean won instead of Chinese renminbi, which resulted in a big loss upon him, as he had to convert the currency twice in order to receive it in renminbi. Sun Lee also accused the company of discrimination against Chinese people. He pointed out the difference in opportunities that Hangan had compared to the Korean members of Super Junior, and also listed the following incidents. When Super Junior held a large-scale concert in Hangan's own country, his family was relegated to sit at the furthest edge and corner of the stadium, while the families of the Korean members were assigned to sit near the main central stage. When the Korean members were in China, all of their living costs, including personal items and expenses, were equally shared between the company and members. Whereas in South Korea, Hangan had to cover and resolve such expenses on his own. When they were in South Korea, the Korean members of Super Junior could live at their own homes while the group was inactive. But when they were in China, SM did not allow Hangan to go home and required him to live with the other members. One year after the file, Hangan won the lawsuit against SM, as the Seoul Central District Court ruled in his favor over the validity of the exclusive contract he originally signed in 2003, as well as of the altered contract he signed in February of 2007, and the affiliated contract signed in December of the same year. With all contracts being declared invalid, Hangan had no longer any legally binding connection with SM and was as free as a bird. But as expected from SM, the company did not accept the results very well. One of its representatives spoke with a media outlet in the aftermath of the decision and stated, we cannot accept the result. We will file an immediate appeal to reverse the decision. Although this could have happened following the court's decision, the case was only closed almost a year later in September of 2011, with both parties coming to a mutual agreement. Hangan went through a really hard time during his time as a member of Super Junior. Years after the lawsuit, he revealed that during their first year as a group, his income was even lower than when he was a trainee, and that he even had to give back a portion of it to SM. But thankfully, his members helped him financially, despite the fact that they also didn't earn much money either. And that one time him and the member Shiwon both fell sick, but were forced to attend an award show ceremony two hours later anyway. Because of everything he had to endure at that time, Hangan became depressed, had nightmares every day, and already called his father to ask, 
what if one day I commit suicide? But he continues to show gratitude towards his time in South Korea as it contributed to his personal growth. After leaving South Korea, Hangan returned to his home country and built an empire. In 2010, he signed with the company Yuehua Entertainment and debuted as a soloist in July with the album The Heart of Gone that sold over a million copies. Days after he held his first two solo concerts that broke record sales, selling out all tickets in only 37 minutes. Since then, he has established himself as one of the most successful solo acts in the history of Mandopop, was already considered the most influential male celebrity in China, and became one of the most awarded singers of the country in the past decade, winning including several international awards, such as the World's Best Male Artist Award at the World Music Awards. Hangan was the first Chinese singer to be invited to perform at the ceremony in 2014. Two years before that, he won the Best Asia Act category at the MTV European Music Awards against huge names such as Jolly and Tsai and none other than Super Junior, thus being selected for the Best Worldwide Act category. Hangan faced four other music acts from all around the world, including one of the most famous singers of all time, Rihanna, and took the award home. One of Hangan's most notorious solo songs is the track Clown Mask, that seems to reference the time when he had to hide his face in South Korea. In 2015, he released the album San Gan. That served as his final album as he put his wish of focusing on his acting career after his 30s into practice, although he had already acted a lot prior to that. Hangan starred in different dramas, but mostly in films. He made his big screen debut with the film My Kingdom in 2011, that earned him the most anticipated actor award at the Huating Awards. Some of his most notable works in the field are so young, released in 2013, the film became a major success at the Chinese box office, grossing over 700 million yuan. Seek McCartney, that premiered in Cannes in 2014 and is marked in the history of China for being the country's first film centered on a gay couple. On that same year, Han Gan was the male protagonist of X-Files, a romantic comedy that became one of China's most successful series of films of the genre and gave him the most popular actor award at the China Image Film Festival. Still in 2014, Hangan made his Hollywood debut by making a cameo appearance on Transformers Age of Extinction, the highest grossing film of 2014 in the whole world. In 2016, he was awarded for being an all-rounder entertainer at the highly prestigious Top Chinese Music Awards. He also won the Best Male Singer of the Year Award on that same day, and during his speech, he thanked the founder of SM Li Su Man, who was present in the audience. After thanking his fans and staff, Hangan said, I'm especially grateful towards Lee Su Man. He's the reason I am on stage. He led me on the path to becoming a singer. Without Lee Su Man, I wouldn't have stand on the stage as a singer. I'd like to convey my gratitude to Lee Su Man. Still in 2016, he released the documentary Remove All Baggage to celebrate his 10th debut anniversary. Hangan remains focused on his acting career today and has also ventured into other areas becoming a captain on the hip-hop show Street Dance of China an owner, investor, designer, race car driver, and diver. In 2019, he got married with the actress and singer Selena Jade. And in 2022, the couple welcomed their first child, a beautiful baby girl. It's very common for us to see idols who face such problems with their companies struggling after getting out of their contract. So aside from being worthy of an Oscar-winning film, Hangan's story, it's very refreshing and admiring. He really came out on top and did it resiliently.